So just, okay, fine. Mm -hmm. uh, Mrs. Collins. Malcolm was born the way he was. He was born, in fact, we waited for Malcolm's birth. Uh, we were of the superstitious tribe of Africa, the Watusis, and we believed that the seventh child uh, came with certain, uh, endowed with certain rights that would surpass other children of that family. So when he, he was born, we expected great things of Malcolm. I don't know if this influenced him, the fact that his family put him in a certain category. Uh, my father, in particular, was concerned uh, with him after he was born uh, because he was very fair, and he felt that this would be a hindrance to us applying ourselves to him because people at that time put a lot of stock on black and yellow and colors, you know what I mean. <laughs> so uh, much of what Malcolm should, would have gotten from the family had he been born black, he didn't get it because we didn't want to make a difference in the light child over the black ones. Well, where did he get it, say, in his late teens and his early 20s? Uh... Uh, Malcolm lived with me from 12 until he went to prison. I had a chance to discipline Malcolm in prison. Malcolm was an, ag was an aggressive young boy. I admired it. I stimulated it. I feel, felt that a black man, a black young man, uh, over the period of 400 years in America, had been deprived of any aggressive uh, thoughts even. If you show aggressive uh, thoughts before the white man, he would uh, erase you, set you uh, apart from the others as a villain. So, but I felt that in order for Malcolm, after my father's death and uh, his mother's having gone to a hospital, I felt that it was my duty uh, to stimulate his arrogance, stimulate his impulsiveness, let him feel that life was the life that God gave him belonged to him. He didn't have to pay homage to anyone. This is how I guided him. What kinds of influences do you think being in prison had upon him? What kind of effect? In prison, I was able to really direct him into accepting facts as a guideline to, to life, not an, an illusion, uh, something that's dramatized. Prison is real. If a god uh, sees fit to throw you in solitary confinement, this is for real. Malcolm was able to see this and accept life from a realistic uh, point of view. He was, I think all of the illusions that he may have adopted in his youth uh, from environment, I think he lost it in prison. I think he really saw life for real. And this was one of the most valuable uh, assets that Malcolm did acquire in life was courage, a matter of fact, to accept life from a realistic point of view. Nothing dramatized would interest Malcolm, nothing. He became involved with the Muslims while he was in prison. Uh, yes, okay. through my brother Reginald, he uh, became involved with uh, the black Muslims. And, uh, the black Muslim uh, 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 Islam, uh, Elijah Muhammad gave him a chance to excel. Uh, had not it been for Elijah Muhammad, I would have had to find possibly another field to project him through. But Islam, uh, as it was then in a small, uh, uh, it was a very small thing at that time, and this gave Malcolm a chance to really excel and build the nation of Islam. Much of the nation of Islam is Malcolm. Do you feel that being in the Muslims had a profound effect on Malcolm? To some degree. Uh, it gave him a chance, as I said before, to recognize the needs of the masses of people. It also gave him a chance to recognize the lack of knowledge 
uh, the masses uh, uh, contain. Uh, uh, it also uh, gave him a chance to recognize the fact that black people are their own worst enemies. In what ways uh, do you think black people are their own worst enemies? We don't realize, many of us, that we are free. If we realize this word freedom and recognize it for what it means and watch the other people on earth exercise freedom, then we would not sing a song, we shall overcome, and walk up and down roads and beg for this and want poverty programs and all this type of thing. We would know that our ability to care for another race would give us more uh, ability to care for our own needs, and we don't provide for ourselves. Was Malcolm nonviolent in your estimation? Now, uh, from my uh, estimation, no man is nonviolent, no man is violent. And Malcolm believed as a man should believe that if you strike him, he, it, it was his duty as a man to strike you back. What kind of an effect did Malcolm have on you? On me, I believe my, uh, the effect he had on me was to see him grow from childhood into a dynamic figure, a man with an understanding of man in himself and life in itself. Uh, on me, he was to me like Jesus is to most Christians. The only, I, I can imagine how the Virgin Mary felt about her Jesus. This is what Malcolm was to me. Each step that he grew, each time that he, uh, the changes came, I could feel them and see them. I could see them in his manner, his, uh, his approach to me his respect for me. Malcolm had a great respect for womanhood. I don't know how he came by this, but possibly, as I said, from the our tribe. Maybe this was a virtue that most men don't uh, have, but he had it, a great respect for womanhood. See, Malcolm made every sacrifice that I can't know, I don't know any other man who made these sacrifices. Malcolm made every sacrifice to make himself Hold a man worthy of saying to you, do something about yourself, young lady. Or saying to a young man, get up and take your bed and walk. This is how Malcolm affected me. This is how I saw him. Was Malcolm searching uh, when he went abroad, traveled abroad for the period of time? Yes. This is why I say he was ready. Malcolm broadened his scope. Much of what he learned abroad gave him a mature a, approach to the black man's problem. Before he had much, much frustration. In the nation of Islam, there is much frustration. Malcolm had uh, acquired some of this frustration. On his, on his return from Africa after traveling, and spending time with all of the black leaders and revolutionary leaders, Malcolm came home a man. No frustrations, no emotional problems, no desire for material gains, which is one of the greatest assets a man can acquire, is to lose that desire for material gains, lose that value on that man's dollar. Malcolm had to cast aside all of this. He walked into my house. He told me he was going to speak at Harvard that night. He spoke at Harvard Law Firm. Forum. After he came back to the house, I gave him a diploma. Tonight, Malcolm, you're a man. From my point of view. He said, I traveled hard, didn't I? I said, yes, you did. But you made it. You're a man. He was ready. Do you think the program that he was developing would have led black people out of their bondage? 